there, everyone. Happy Sunday. Happy Mother's Day. I love it. Um, so this, today I had a sermon that was really awesome. I loved it. I want to share this with you. I want you to hear some of these points. It's amazing and stuff. And I learned, and I'll give you some of the clip notes. So he gave his sermon way longer, but I just took all this information. I love it. I jotted down notes and I just want to share it with you guys because I want you to have something really awesome to remember. And um, so there's four keys on this that I'll talk about, but in the beginning, where I want you to lead is um, their sermons are going through detours. So understanding all the detours that God brings us and how much they can become a blessing. So the detour, um, so God wants to promote you. So when I heard that, I was like, oh my gosh, I want to be promoted. God, will you promote me? Yes, he will. He'll promote you and he'll promote me and my kids and my life. And so um, God is in the success. He's into success. And he's into you being a success. success. So um, in Deuteronomy 29.9, it says, carefully follow the terms of the covenant so that you may prosper in everything you do. So... There you go. I mean, it's his word. This is not my word. I'm just the messenger giving the message, and I'm just the person who's going to learn from it and um, change my way of thinking and change my life based on this. So third John verse 2, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that um, all may be and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. So there you go, it's building. You're building within your inside yourself. You're building outside yourself. You're building with your thoughts. You're building with your words. And um, ask yourself this question. Would it be okay for God to promote me? Would it be okay? Would I be okay if God promoted me? Would I be okay with that? So take that this week and think about that. Like Think about promoting yourself in the eyes of God. He wants to promote you. And um, then ask yourself this question. Would it be okay to succeed in health? So think about your health, your spiritual health, your physical health, um, just all around health. Think of that Would it, and ask yourself, would it be okay to succeed in my health? So yes, it would. So the first key of is um, habitation. So I thought this was kind of strange. I was like, habitation, what does that mean? Like, where is this sermon? Pastor Sam going with this. And I got this from Grand Rapids first um, live today. Uh, it's on YouTube if you want to go back and watch his sermon. He's really awesome. I love him. He's very excited. He gives a really powerful message. But I want to share you guys um, the clip notes on this. So habitation. That's a matter of presence of God in your life. And it's not results driven. It's not based on results. And the examples were like, I got a bigger boat than you, or I got a house, or I got this big fancy car. I can travel all over the world with all these vacations. And look at me, look at me, look at my life based on my results, based on things and power positions. So it could be like, I'm going to identify myself as like the most successful business person in the world. I've ran 400 businesses or 80 businesses in my life. And I've made, you know, $25 billion worth of real estate, whatever, whatever your thing is, or, you know, it could be smaller for you. It could be bigger. Who knows? The point is it's not based on this result of this thing you get to show people or this position. Like I'm a power position. Um, it's not driven that way. So what true success is in a spiritual sense is always habitation, staying in the presence of God. You know, successful people know, and everyone knows, when you're not able to operate in the presence of God, then you start to waffle. You start to go on your own little detour, and it's not going to end well. So God tries to bring you back. Come back this way, Cammie. I need you to be in my presence now because I'm going to take you down a different path. It might be a little painful. It might be a little uncomfortable. It might be a little scary, but that's okay. Trust the path that I have you. Trust the guide where I'm switching you to. So um, I think of it too like this, like in like a lesson. So sometimes we have lessons that we have to learn and God doesn't give us the next lesson until he wants us to have this lesson learned. So I can kind of think of it like in my situation, it might be like a person 
that I need to not answer the phone um, anymore. That person, when they do call, like I feel good. And then when I'm off the phone, now I feel bad. Like that, God's trying to guide me. Don't answer that phone anymore. Stop answering the phone. Stop connecting with something that doesn't make you feel good because it's pulling me out of alignment. It's pulling me in, into something that I, I'm not. And so, or you can think of it like this example is easy, um, like a kindergartner. So you're gonna learn the letter A and you learn it and then you go to B, but now B's, you're having a struggle with B. And so the next day you just keep doing the B and the B and God gives you the next lesson when you're done with that one. So when you're done with B, you move to C. Same thing in relationships with us and building friendships and different things. It's all based on lessons. God's going to keep giving that same lesson over and over and over again until you learn it. So if you feel like, why am I stuck in this rut? Why do I keep doing this? Because you haven't learned the lesson yet. It's deep down rooted inside of you in your subconscious mind. And when you come, become awake to that and you grow and you learn that lesson, I'm telling myself now, next, thank you, God, for the lesson. Next lesson. Yep, I learned it. Thank you, God. I'm awake now, like to learn these new lessons. I'm ready, I'm eager, I'm thirsting, and I'm hungry for it. So then the next one was, that was first key is habitation. And the second key is submission. So submission is obeying him. You have to submit to God, not man or woman. Now we work in this world. We have to work and have a job and create um, a lifestyle of, you know, clothing and housing and all this stuff, okay? And um, so we submit to God. We don't necessarily need to submit to man or woman, but we work for them. Um, and um, we submit always to God. So that first, we're habitation, we're in the presence. Now we have to submit because there's going to be times where we're going to want to waffle. We're going to want to go our own way. This is more exciting over here, more fun over here, but we do have to submit to him. So obedience brings blessings. Disobedience brings blocks. So there we are stuck again in that block when we're disobedient. We know, we all know when it's happening. You know, I know. And then um, just think of yourself like your main mission this week is submission. So the main mission this week is submission, right? Submit. It's okay to feel uncomfortable and a little bit of suffering here or there, or a little bit of pain. But start to repeat and tell yourself, I am a citizen of heaven. We're just like we're a citizen of the United States. We're Americans. Be a citizen of heaven and think about that. When you own that identity, think of now how you're going to react to certain situations or act in certain situations. Or you're just in the presence of God when you say, I'm a citizen of heaven. Like I'm, I'm in his world. I'm God's. I'm his child and written in his book. It just aligns you back up and it keeps your mind clear and keeps you in the presence of God. So we have habitation, then we have submission, and next we have is expectation. So how he worded all these, these are all links. So um, habitation has to be linked with submission. Those have to be linked. You can't let go of the link. You have to have those two linked first. Then the third one, third link is going to be expectation. So sub submission is expectation. So it's a matter of faith, clinging to the truth, holding what God says. Okay. Joseph falsely accused. He was falsely accused. He had no choice. He had to go to jail. They locked him up, but he had hope and faith. He didn't let his conditions change how he was in the presence of God. His feet might have been creep, crippled, but his faith wasn't. His um, conditions might have been the worst, but he didn't get stuck there by his conditions. He had that faith. That was a matter of faith. He's building it. He's remembering it. He's thinking about it. And your belief in God has to be so big, so big that you believe it. That is faith. It's there, it's the vision, it's the imagination. It is there and it brings you the life um, and you expect it. So that is expectation. Now the fourth one is linked to revelation. So expectation is a revelation. Submission is expectation. 
Habitation is submission and number one was habitation. That's backwards going back through. So expectation is revelation. That, uh, that is a matter of hearing the word of God. Where do we hear it? The Bible, through all those stories, the Old Testament, the New Testament. So we cling to his word of God to promote you, to promote me. We cling to his word. That's our promo promotion to be with him and promote ourselves. That's our way of getting us out of the, into this detour of pointing us to success. He's into success. He wants us to have success. So, and they give an example, like Joseph never had a Bible. So how did he know all this stuff? So he didn't have the Bible. He didn't have it. He had to learn from his listening to God. He had to quiet everything down. He had to figure out who he was with God. God's telling him something. He listened. He believed it. So um, he didn't have a Bible. So when I think back to that, it brings a big smile to my face because we get a Bible. Like that is so awesome. We get this truth. It's all written down for us. It's amazing. I just, I love it. Listening um, to the word of God and listening to God's word will put you at ease. And faith comes by hearing. So we internally, we can hear all this stuff. We can read it in the Bible and um, it comes by hearing. So I wanted you to hear this message. I love it. And um, I think it's really helpful and it's a Mother's Day kind of thing for me to you, all the mothers and fathers too. This just isn't for mothers today, but it's for fathers too. So I want to say a quick little prayer and then I'll end this session and like and subscribe me below and share this video if you think it's worth someone else hearing this and it'll really help them change their mindset and um, their subconscious mind of believing that God is really there. That's the faith right there. So Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, lead me this week and guide me and lead anyone watching this video that they may too find the guidance and the direction that they need within any storm, any condition, that we believe in God, that we have faith in him and just keep guiding us, Lord. Keep teaching us the lessons that we need to learn and thank you for reteaching us and not getting frustrated or angry with us because you are a God who says what you say you're going to do. You are a God of your word. And so we give thanks for that. And that we just reach out for your presence each moment of our day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in your name. Amen. Thanks, friends. Share, like, comment below too.